We're pleased to be joined now by one of the most decorated broadcasters in the history of our business. It's Bob Costas. And Bob, as we saw throughout this documentary, from his earliest days in Chicago through your time at NBC pregame and calling these games, you got to witness yeah. Jordan in the ascent. And he arrived, I'd say, very much a star. But he became something yeah. altogether different. As you saw this evolution, are there specific moments and times where it was clear that he was becoming truly one of the all-timers? Well, he was a pop icon in the 80s. He had the 63-point game against Larry Bird and the Celtics, even though they lost that game and lost that series, wanting to be like Mike, the relationship with Nike. But where I really felt it turned was with the dream team in Barcelona, at least my perception of it. They had won the second of the two titles. Uh, they beat the Trailblazers. And only about a month after that, they're in Barcelona. And the mania surrounding Michael Jordan in Barcelona, everywhere he went, and a billboard of him on the side of a 10-story building from pavement to the peak of the building. Then I got a sense of, of the international scope of it. And then, of course, he only added to it by winning one more for the first three feet and then coming back and winning three more in a row. I have been fortunate to cover Tiger at the Masters. I went there. 97 was my first. Good time to show up for the first time. And obviously, through the years, he won so many more that I must admit that at times, my brain's muddled. It's difficult to focus on specific images and memories. For you, having been there for all of this, Bob, are there moments in time that stand out and as crystal clear to you about Jordan and this Bulls team? Well, the last shot. It's an obvious choice, but it's so classic in every way, turning a one-point deficit into a one-point win. They would have been up against it if there had been a game seven three nights later in Salt Lake City with Pippen hobbling around. So that has to top the list. It was his first final when they defeated um, Magic Johnson and the Lakers in 91, and Marv had that great call. Oh, a spectacular move by Michael Jordan, I think, for the casual fans that might have solidified uh, an image of Jordan, the shot on Elo that preceded that. And then there was something which we saw tonight. It was a miss. But think about it. Reggie Miller hits a shot that in any other game, that's the end of it. It's a wonderful buzzer beater by Reggie Miller. It's classic Reggie. There's 0.7 seconds to go. Michael takes the inbound pass, moving from right to left. So he's moving in the wrong direction. Right. He's got two defenders on him. He's got a double pump to free himself. And he damn near makes the shot. It spins out. Everyone's holding their breath. I mean, do you really think anybody else would have had a chance in that situation? Didn't seem like it to me, and I was sitting there watching it. No, and, and Jordan's sound about how, for a minute, everybody held their breath. I mean, realizing the power and control yeah. you have over everybody is, is remarkable then and now. And, and then and now is so, so truly fascinating. That's an overword use, overused word, I should say, but he is. And I feel like the mythology of the man and the reality of the man, uh, I'm curious, as a guy that lived it, as a guy that saw it, how closely do those two marry up? Because so often, as you know, Bob, the, 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 the tales that are told, these Bunyan-esque tales, aren't real. But you saw yeah. it. Is it. Was it as it was told? Pretty close. You know, I think the word legend is thrown around too much in sports. Almost every glowing adjective applies to Michael Jordan. But you know who's legendary? Satchel Paige is legendary. Sure. Babe Ruth is legendary because so many of the stories are apocryphal. We don't have documentation. Virtually everything that Michael Jordan did, we saw it in real time. It's replayed many times over. Now we're seeing it again. The stuff shows up on YouTube and it matches up. Anyone who thinks, oh, this is a bunch of hype. Maybe in a different era, they wouldn't have won as many championships. And that's probably valid. If they had peaked in the 80s, against Birds, Celtics, and, and Magic's Lakers, and even Dr. J and Moses Malone with the 76ers, they might not have won six. Mm -hmm. But he was every bit as good as advertised. There's almost not a dissenting voice anymore. You can make a case for Kareem, because it's hard to compare centers to forwards and guards. And there's a case to be made for Kareem. But among forwards and guards, Bird, Magic, none of them, none of them contest the judgment, it's not a consensus anymore. It's virtually by acclamation that he's the greatest player who ever played. This is a terrible radio trick I'm about to do, but I'm doing it anyway. All right. Okay, you know okay. how you get the guy for the segment and you say, could you stick around for another segment? Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Uh, you and I have spoken off air 
about a story yeah. that you have to share that has to do with a different segment we do. That segment, Bob, is uh -huh. what? Uh, bad Beats. Okay. My favorite. Okay. Well, I love that. Uh, that's a great start. Will you rejoin us when we have the room to, to do justice to the story? Because I refuse to shortchange this story because it is yeah. truly an epic tale that needs to be told from start to finish without skipping details. So will you rejoin me later this week to tell the story of this bad beat? Absolutely, I will, because like most people, the rest of this week, I have only two things to do, diddly and squat, so I'm available. <laughs> well, we, we, Bob, are in the content business, and, and now that this documentary is over, diddly and squat sounds like the A's and B's, so you can be part <laughs> of this. Before I go here, while we're on the subject of the NBA, there's something I wanted to get in if you have 30 seconds. Go. Is that okay? Please. All right. The relationship between Isaiah Thomas and Michael, and that hasn't been repaired, that's obvious, and the controversy about the Dream Team, all that stuff aside, I was there with Isaiah through that 97-98 season. I heard every syllable he uttered, whatever his personal feelings may have been. He never once slighted Michael Jordan. There was never once a left-handed or backhanded compliment. He gave him full credit as the greatest player he had ever played against, the greatest player he had ever seen. I never heard him in a production meeting, out to dinner, off the air, never once say anything that diminished Michael Jordan. So he was completely fair and completely professional in his coverage of Michael Jordan during that last dance season. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.